morning, everybody. Joe Chacho here. Happy Friday to everybody. just want to go over a couple of things before we go over our subject today on some uh, key components to a good sales presentation. I'm having Brian add some stuff to the workshop for us, and it'll be listed on the uh, Dropbox back office featured on the workshop calls. came up with this little form here that uh, I used yesterday when I was out, and it seemed to me to help me because it gave the client something to hold on to. And it's two, two, two pages. One of it's got the guarantees that we offer, all the guarantees that we offer. And on the other side, it's got the carriers that we represent just with life. And I went to a client's house, made a sale, and I think this kind of helped me a little bit because it made the person feel good. What I did on the one I took, I put my company card down here on the bottom, gave him this paper here as we were talking. I said, this is something I give to everybody to let you know a little bit about me. I got my picture on the card. I said, it kind of tells you the guarantees that we offer to our clients. And this is a short list of the carriers that we represent. Lady looked at it. I kind of paused. I didn't talk. I saw how she was looking down. She put her glasses on. She started looking at it. And she goes, okay. She turned it over, and she goes, boy, you represent a lot of different carriers, don't you? That led me into telling her, yes, ma'am, I'm an independent broker. What I'm going to do, I'm going to find the best program that works for you because I know you're on a budget. And what I want to do is help you today find a program that is suitable to your needs to where somebody of your choice who will be responsible will not have to burden all of the cost when that sad day comes. She looked at it. <clears throat> she turned it back over. And she goes, I've seen something before that I get by the mail. Is this different than the stuff from the mail? Now, I'm not going to bore you with all the stuff we talked about, but yet what it did, it kind of opened up a conversation to where instead of me telling her all the stuff, she was reading, asking, comparing to what she had seen before. So I believe it gave me a better lead-in to speaking with her. So Brian is going to put this on the back end today, the back office, so for you guys to have. Number two, everybody knows AIG's rates went up. We were told through the grapevine that the rates were going to go up a little bit higher than what they did. They went up. People 70 and older, there's a bigger gap between them and Gerber. But 50 to 70, 50 to 65, their rates are comparable. They're a little bit higher. They're a little bit lower than Gerber, which is the main competitor for AIG. So that's also an email that Jay had sent out to everybody. It's already updated on our FE cost. So when you go to the rate calculator, it's already sitting on there for you. So when you go on there, you're going to see the new rates for AIG. Something else Brian's going to put on the drop box is that we spoke about a daily planner a couple days ago. I feel that everybody's got to have a plan the night before what they're going to do that day instead of waking up trying to decide what they're going to do. I like to start my night at nighttime by figuring out where I'm going, either a follow-up, a phone call, call a carrier, visit a client, go see a referral. During the day, I've got forms that I can fill in. I'm available from 2 to 3. I can door knock. I'm available from 3 to 5. I can door knock. I can make this phone call that I was unable to put off from this morning. So he's going to put two of them up there, and they're actually going to be two different styles. I've got this one here, which is something I actually worked up with all the times. You can put some follow-up notes here. And this is something here I got from the World Wide Web. Daytime, the day hours. It's got personal stuff, it's got memos, and it's got work stuff. So it gives you a little bit more stuff, a little bit smaller area right here, but it's two different ones for you to pick from. Whichever one you pick is your choice, yet I think you need to pick something to where you get yourself more organized and you're going to hold yourself accountable. i got to be here. i got to make this phone call. Because believe it or not, when you see it here, I believe it's you're more responsive. Your brain becomes triggered into what you need to remember. A little bit about what we're going to talk about on the call today. Lastly, Transamerica came out with a new uh, leave behind. 
It's a little four-page piece of uh, work. So order it. The, uh, the numbers are on the back. It's a lot of numbers. I'm not going to read it, but just go to Transamerica. You can pick this up. Very, very nice. It's impressive, guys. When you give somebody this here, you highlight some stuff with a yellow highlighter. You put your company card either on the top, top here or the bottom over here, wherever your choice is. These help you make sales because, first of all, Transamerica is a well-known company such as Mutual Omaha as well as Gerber. So when you go into a client's house and they're saying, I've never heard of that carrier before, you can sit and say, well, I represent a lot of different carriers, as you see here, okay? And what I've got is this company here. So use this form to let them know you're an independent agent and then come up with these nice four-color um, pamphlets they've got. Royal Neighbors has them, America Forces, all the carriers we have have this stuff here. Please go on the website, order these for yourself, because it is something that is very positive and very powerful when you hand somebody this here, because it just makes them look that you are big, big, big. Okay, let's talk about the call today. I'm going to kind of do, I talked about, on my email I said we're going to talk about some, some components, plural, of making a good presentation. I'm going to speak about just one component today because this can be a 10 different version call we can make. The key component I want to speak about today are the words that we choose, how we word a response. So I was thinking about this here, and I came across this, this lady. All it has is her name is uh, Rebecca. She was talking about verbs that she uses. And I was out surfing the web and all that there, and I came across this here, and I said, this lady has, is, is impressing because what happens with us is that our minds are set. We are always on an autopilot. And what ends up happening, for us to change words that we're not used to incorporating into our vocabulary, there was a gentleman named by Lally, L-A-L-L-Y, that came up to change a habit of what we're used to doing. <clears throat> he says it takes about two months to change a habit. He said, well, exactly, it takes 66 days. So as you keep on reading, he went on to say that it depends on the person. It depends on you. It takes anywhere between 18 days to 254 days to actually make a change up here to change your habit from a good habit to a bad habit and a bad habit to a good habit, okay? Another gentleman says it takes 21 days. Yeah, think about 21 days, 66 days, 18 to 254. To me, it's called you've got to start reprogramming your mind. You've got to start injecting those positive thoughts in there, start overloading them so all of the things that you're saying, not that they're bad, we're going to kind of talk about some better words to use so when you're in a client's home, it's more friendly. It's much easier for them to hear. Now, before I go over what this lady had wrote down here, this is something I'm going to suggest to you. We've talked about before how you should put words or phrases on your dashboard. Get like the little yellow post-its or the stickers or get some tape, whatever you want to do, put on your dashboard. Put on there words that you say you want to change such as the word burden, who will pay, who will be responsible, what if, or just to name some. Put those on your dashboard. Drive around with them for a couple of days, and believe it or not, I'm telling you because I know when you're in the home visiting with a client, those, that dashboard is going to pop up in your mind, and you're going to look at it, and you're going to see exactly the order you put them in because when you're driving, either you're changing the radio, you're adjusting your air conditioning, you're putting in your CD, you're messing with your phone, those three, four, or five items you have on your dashboard are there. So you're constantly looking at them. Subconsciously, they're sitting in there, okay? So consciously, you can remember certain things. Subconsciously, these things are just going to pop up. So the more we see something, the more we practice something, hopefully subconsciously our brain is going to automatically say, okay, Joe, it's okay to get out of that safe zone. So okay to get out of that comfort zone. Let's kind of go into the deep waters. Let's kind of take that little safety vest off. 
Let's kind of get out there and try some different things. And what happens is your brain protects you, okay? When you see a beehive, the first thing you do is you back off because you don't want to get stung. Well, believe it or not, the bees really aren't going to bother you unless you bother them. So what happens is that our brain is programmed to protect us. So what ends up happening when we go into a situation that we're unsure about, what happens is that we have the wall that comes up, prevents us to move forward, and what that does is that that does not enable us to make a proper presentation, use a proper wording, because our mind is all convoluted because we've actually hit, I'm afraid. Abnormal? No. It takes practice. Can you forget about the past and say, I'm not going to worry about the past, I'm going to work on new stuff? Some people can do that there. But yet a lot of times you've got to sit and tell yourself, I understand the words that I'm using are good. Yet, is there better words that I can use that can help me make a better presentation, a more appealing word that's going to catch the client's attention? I'll tell you one word that I've, I was reading some sales magazine, probably, I don't know, about 177 years ago, and I read it, and I'm reading it, and I'm going, man, this, what, what, come on, man. The word that a lot of people use is the word but. Our company does, your company does this, but my company does this here. This company, this, but our company, this. What happens is that the word but, whenever we hear it, our brain automatically tells us something negative is going to follow. So what ends up happening is the person you're speaking with, their brain actually shuts down for maybe a second or so. So what you're going to follow with, they don't hear it. Or if they do hear it, it doesn't register because they're automatically thinking it's something negative. So the article went on to say that there's a couple words that they, that they suggested the first word is, however, the company you have, it's a very, very great company, but ours offers cash value. The company you have is a great company, yet ours offers this. However, ours offers this here. I like the word yet. It's a better connecting word for the two phrases you want to come across. And when you say the word yet or the word however, the client, the person you're speaking with, does not go into a stop zone, their ears close up, and you lose those first two or three words you're saying, which could be important words. So you've got to use a good combination word that will join the two phrases, two sentences, two examples together to where the client has your attention. Wording is what we're talking about today. Now, I like the word I'm here to help you, assist you, what are your needs? What are you looking to accomplish today? I enjoy my job. You want to come across as a happy person. Because what we talked about yesterday, when you don't get in front of people, you go into a zone to where you become a little too aggressive, you come across with commission breath. So what we've got to realize is that if these words are words we're not used to using, dashboard them, or keep them in your flip book, keep them in whatever you take in a briefcase, and look at them. People can't read. You can't read this upside down, can you? So people can't read what you're looking at. And what it does, you're constantly reminding your brain, it's okay, Joe. You're used to saying this. Let's start trying these words here. And over time, depending on how hard you, tr you, you practice, how much you practice will decide and dictate the smoother you're going to get. So this lady here put something, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to have Brian put it on the actual on our back, on our back office, <clears throat> and she says uh, here, you may go down and say, you know something, let's kind of find out what's wrong. Okay, let's kind of find out what's wrong with this company here. She suggests, why don't we identify the problems with this company? I'm adding in, and let me show you why ours is a little bit different or a little bit better. We sometimes sit and say, oh, I see you have a problem. Let me fix your problem. What about if you sit and say, what if I help you resolve these issues to make things a little better for you? Let me see here. People sit and say, you want to spend as little as possible. I know you're on a budget. Spend as little as possible. 
She says, what I'm going to try to help you do is I'm going to help you minimize your expenses, and then from there you add what you want after there. We have some new ideas. I'm going to sit and say, based on hers, let me implement some new strategies on what the carriers I represent, the companies I represent, offer you as a client. Wording means everything, guys. When you're speaking with somebody and you're coming across, I've got a habit of using my hands all the time, okay? So when I go to a house a lot of times, I like to actually put my hands like this here because it becomes sometimes annoying. If you do use your hands as I do, and I try to hold my hands down, I actually sit on my hands sometimes, but then I start bouncing around because my hands want to come out. So what I try to do, I try to keep them below my face, because when you're talking and you're covering your face like this here, to give an example, the person loses contact with you. You go blank for a second. And believe it or not, when somebody's actually looking at you and they're focusing on what you're sharing with them, you don't need to do anything to obstruct their view or their hearing. The hearing is not going to get obstructed by your hands here, but believe it or not, when you do this here, their eyes may blink, and whatever reason, they may just miss a half of a word that you've got to say. Now, to me, whenever I want to sit and make a change, it's challenging. One change, I think everybody on this call, or maybe 95% of the people on the call here, has said, I want to lose weight. I'm overweight. I want to drop five pounds before I go to this wedding. I need to drop 10 pounds because we're going to be going to the beach for the summertime. So what ends up happening is that you come out with this miracle new diet. You come out with whatever diet you see on Facebook, you see on the World Wide Web, and this is the game here. I'm going to lose all this weight here. But what happens, your brain is used to eating that piece of pumpkin pie every night. Every morning when you wake up, you're used to having your bowl of cereal with the bananas, the strawberry, the oatmeal, the orange juice, all the sugar, and you're saying, golly, Joe, what do I do? So what a lot of times people do is that people who really, really want to make a change in their life, they do some research. They say, okay, what are the pros and cons? Should I do this type of diet? Should I eat at this time here? Are there certain times I should eat? Are there certain times I should eat carbs in the morning, afternoon, or night? Times I should eat fresh fruit, morning, afternoon, or night? You've got to go and check. A lot of it has to do, they say, with your blood type. A lot of it has to do with just your family history. In my family, there is high cholesterol. My aunt had a 300 cholesterol, and she hardly ever ate anything with cholesterol. It's just the way her body was hardwired. So for us to change what we want to do and add words to our vocabulary, you need to put the words in front of you. My suggestion, as I've said again, dashboard, your bathroom mirror because you're in there combing your hair, putting on your deodorant, brushing your teeth, put the words up there. Put them on your refrigerator. You're going into the refrigerator to get something. Put them on your little snack cabinet door to where it's constantly in front of you. And what ends up happening, your brain's going to start picking up on this stuff here. And then by you practicing when you're in a house, you're looking at these words here and say, okay, I want to start saying the word. I want to identify the problem you're having. I want to discuss with you, and I want to focus on exactly what you're looking for. What I want to do is I want to maximize the amount of money you're going to spend to get you the best benefit. When you start incorporating these words and you have them in front of you, and what you're going to start doing is making those words will start coming from way, way, way back here up to here to where they're coming out. And once you start making some changes, your brain's going to say, it wasn't that hard. It did take me a little bit longer. Yes, I'm hard-headed. Yes, I'm not putting it on the mirror like Joe said. Yes, I'm not putting it on my dashboard. Once you start making those changes, you're going to do better. Lastly, the only way that anybody can make a change or want to make a change, they've got to accept that what they're doing is not perfect. What happens, we get set in our ways. Men have egos. Oh, I can't change that there. I'm not going to do that there. If somebody sees that there, oh, what are they going to think? Who cares? Who cares? It's about making you happy. It's about making you more productive so when you're in a home visiting with somebody, you're able to achieve the higher goal, which is to help the client 
make a sale, and help your family out. Put these little stickers wherever you choose. Practice them. Think about them. When you're at lunch, bring them out. Look at them. Again, it's repetition. It's up to you guys. And when you sit and say, I need to make a change, I want to make a change, and I see that this will help me, eventually, 18 days, 21 days, 66 days, 254 days, it's going to become autopilot to where these words start coming out for you. So with that said, does anybody have anything they'd like to say or to add, and we can end the call? If you do, do me a star two, and Jay will open you up. Okay. Star two, if you want to say something, complain about something, raise your hand and say this, this, and this. Okay. Looks like nobody wants to say anything. Remember, the Sagicor 15% uh, bonus commission from now to the end of the year. Was that, Jay? Okay, and also I've got uh, Michelle Hilliker on the phone with Roll Neighbors going over some new and exciting stuff, their benefit package. So anybody who has Roll Neighbors does not know how their point of sale works, does not understand how their term works, does not really understand and realize all the benefits that are offered to your clients. Be on the call Monday, same time, same station, same channel. Make it a great weekend. I appreciate your hard work. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.